All right, let's talk about solar events or very powerful solar events that could one day endanger our technological society. And at first, I was actually going to start this video with the famous Carrington event, the 1859 solar eruption that turned out to be so powerful that it even destroyed telegraph machines around the planet, as well as creating an aurora that was so bright that even during nighttime, birds started to chirp, thinking it was sunlight. So yeah, this event was powerful, but not as powerful as something we're going to be discussing today. But in order for me to introduce the topic, let's step away from the solar events and briefly discuss archaeology. Actually, Vikings. Prior to 2015, quite a lot of archaeologists studying Vikings were not entirely clear when the Vikings were able to reach North America. Now, in Viking mythology, there is actually something known as the Saga of Vinland, which many archaeologists always believed referred to North America, and specifically the location in Newfoundland known as Lanzomido, the location that still contains various structures produced by the Vikings and also contains quite a lot of artifacts as well. And this was always believed to be the first settlement by any European nation on the North American coast, but it was never exactly clear when they actually came here, until some of the archaeologists discovered pieces of timber that contained unusual marks with a very large amount of carbon-14. Or basically they discovered an unusual carbon spike inside the tree that was used by the Vikings to produce one of their longhouses. And it just so happens that they knew exactly what the spike meant. This unusual spike was visible in all trees surviving from this time with this unusually elevated carbon-14 level. And it was most likely from some kind of a solar eruption. The eruption that happened in 993 suggesting that the longhouse was most likely built in 1021. And this exact date was actually because the tree contained only 28 rings, with a 28th ring containing that spike. And by itself, this paper from 2021 was absolutely mind-blowing. It basically connected an event that we only learned about a few years ago with something we knew about for a very long time but could not time. The arrival of Vikings to North America. The arrival to Vinland happened in 1021. There was now absolutely no doubt about it. And so essentially for a lot of archaeologists, this was a tremendous discovery. These enormously powerful events, very likely coming from the sun, that leave the marks behind, visible in a lot of different trees that might have been used by various cultures across the planet. And in just the last few years, several major events from a lot of different locations on the planet have already been directly linked to either various cultures or various historical events simply based on the discovery of this very strange phenomenon. This was even linked to an extremely powerful earthquake somewhere in the northwest part of the US that the scientists now believe actually might come back again because this eventually led to some major discoveries in the Pacific Northwest. But ironically, even though we see the signs of these events in various tree rings on the planet, what exactly is happening here is a completely different question. It's been about 11 years since the original discovery of so-called Miyake events, but we still have absolutely no idea what they really are. And so, hello wonderful person, this is Anton. Let's discuss these events once again because yet another one was discovered even earlier on and this one seems to be the most powerful yet. But I guess first, a brief overview of what exactly we know so far. So this wonderful lady, Fusa Miyake, wanted to discover if there's any historical record of the solar activity by studying ancient trees located in Japan. And almost right away, she discovered something very unusual that happened to this particular tree sometime around 774 AD. In this case, the tree rings indicated an extremely powerful emission, potentially 10 times more powerful than the Carrington event, something that was then confirmed from a lot of other trees across the planet. Interestingly, during this time, there's at least one text from the Middle Ages mentioning some kind of a red crucifix visible after sunset that might be somehow connected to what's going on here. But only the Anglo-Saxon chronicles seem to mention this, and none of the Asian astronomers seem to have noticed anything. Now, this unusual red crucifix could of course be a comet or possibly signs of some kind of a distant supernova, but it's not entirely clear what exactly it is. I mean, it could also be aurora, I guess. Nobody really knows. Either way, by measuring radiocarbon inside the tree rings, it became pretty clear that something very powerful happened around this time. This was also confirmed through beryllium-10 and chlorine-36 isotopic measurements using ice cores, which seemed to contain elevated levels as well. 
with all this suggesting that something was changing in the Earth's atmosphere and producing a lot more radioactive carbon isotopes, including other isotopes, than deposited in ice. This of course could be from the Sun, but it can also be a lot of other things as well. For example, a supernova might have similar effects on the Earth's atmosphere as well. Likewise, a decrease in solar activity can actually dramatically reduce heliosphere of the solar system and thus expose planet Earth to various cosmic rays and powerful radiation coming from outside of the solar system. So basically it's not clear exactly what happened. It's just clear that something did happen in 774, but also 993. But then within just a few years, scientists kept discovering even more of these events, with some even more powerful than before. Mostly by using the same technique known as dendrochronology, basically using ancient tree rings, but by also comparing this with deposits from various ice cores, such as deposits of beryllium. And so at least nine such events have been discovered in the last few years. The most recent one was from 1279, but the oldest one was from back in 12300 BC. And that of course suggested that, on average, they seem to happen once or even twice every thousand years. But exactly what these events are was still unknown. Maybe super flares, maybe the sun is less active, or maybe these are supernova. I mean, the usual culprit are the cosmic rays, but these cosmic rays could be coming from pretty much anywhere. But it looks like now we have a new extreme, the oldest and the most powerful Miyake event ever found. Once again using dendrochronology, but this time by looking at various ancient trees across France. And it looks like this event happened 14,300 years ago, and compared to previous ones, was even more extreme with at least twice as much power. Or basically it produced a peak that was at least twice as high. And just like before, it's something that seems to have changed the atmosphere of the planet for approximately one year. But in terms of potential power, being anywhere from 50 to maybe even 100 times more powerful than the famous Carrington event. Once again resulting in a spike of carbon-14, beryllium-10 and chlorine-36. But assuming that this event was also caused by some kind of a solar emission, potentially similar to various super flares we observe from other stars, such as for example Proxima Centauri, it would imply that maybe once in a while our sun does something really extreme, something that can create a major problem for a lot of technology on the surface and a lot of telecommunication satellites. If we had sitting birds at night and burning telegraph machines during the Carrington event, I'm not sure I want to imagine what would happen if one of these events, one of these Miyake events, happened anytime soon. But even though this is more of a warning, or I guess something we need to understand in order to see what's causing these events, discovering yet another confirmed Miyake event in various archaeological data is actually a huge discovery for a lot of archaeological sciences. It will basically allow archaeologists to connect various events and to understand various ancient cultures by studying various wooden structures they left behind. But I guess at least for now, these Miyake events are still going to remain a bit of a mystery, at least in terms of their actual origin. We're not going to know what's causing them for quite some time, mostly because there's just no way to determine what's causing these unusual spikes. But if they do happen once every millennium, it also means that we might be a little bit overdue for the next one. So yeah, that's probably not very good. But if it does happen, let's hope that um, it's nothing serious and we survive and stuff. Anyway, we'll talk more about this once there are more developments or more discoveries. Until then, check out all the links in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow and as always, bye bye.